So we have a few more people that have hopped on. Again, if you haven't done so yet, if you can introduce yourself in the chat, who you are, kind of what your role is, what school you're from, and then um, what you're hoping to learn about today. Maybe there's a burning question you want to make sure you get answered. If you can put that in the chat, that would be great. The chat's going to be open. Uh, the Q&A is open as well if you have any questions. Otherwise, I think we are going to get started. So uh, thanks for uh, joining us today. My name is Ryan Casey. I work for the Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals and uh, shorthand MASSP. And we help run the Michigan High School Esports League. And so also from uh, my team at MASSP and MHSEL is Maggie Helmer. So generally, if you get a hold of us about the league or some questions, upcoming events, um, anything like that, you're probably going to be talking to Maggie or myself. So uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to talk more in the fall if you choose to join us in the fall or even next spring and spring of 23. But I want to just take about 45 minutes or so and just kind of um, talk to you about a, a wide variety of things related to esports um, and hopefully how you can possibly join our league next year. We have a lot of cool things in store that we want to share with you a little later in the presentation. But for now, we're going to really turn things over to our partners at Play Versus. Um, we started this endeavor in esports two years ago uh, during the pandemic, knowing that we wanted to try and offer something for students, um, especially when schools were being shut down, that you could do primarily virtually if you wanted to. And so Play Versus has been an awesome partner for us, uh, helping really run and operate the league and get this off the ground in terms of scheduling and technical support and all of the uh, behind the scenes work that really goes into it to make this a, a great experience for student athletes. So uh, they're going to be driving the bus, so to speak. Uh, so we have Casey and Zubair and some others from their team, and I'll let them introduce themselves here. Otherwise, they're going to they're going to run kind of the webinar show today, if you will. Uh, Maggie and I will be monitoring the chat and the Q and A. We'll hear, as I mentioned, from Steve Forsberg, who is an assistant principal at Lennington High School and a esports coach for them. Uh, so you can kind of get his perspective, and then Maggie and I are going to share some. Uh, special events that we have planned uh, for next school year that we're really, really excited about. So uh, with that being said, Casey, the uh, floor, virtual floor slideshow is, is yours. So go ahead and take it away. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, we're always excited to talk with our Michigan coaches and potential coaches. I'm actually from Michigan. So um, just really happy to be here and talking with you today. Uh, so as you can see, um, I am not uh, Mike Buck, um, but Mike is your um, customer success rep. So uh, he is having internet issues today. So I uh, manage the customer success team. My name is Casey Han, as Ryan mentioned, um, but this is some contact information for you to jot down. Um, the only variation here is if you've participated with us before, that's when you would engage with Mike. Um, and then otherwise, we have a general new schools email that routes to our sales team. So uh, whichever one is suiting you, uh, please jot that down um, and they would be the ones to help you. Um, but moving right along, before I kind of dive into all the uh, whys and about us with uh, regard to play versus, I'm going to let Steve talk a little bit about his experience so we can really kick things off with some real time feedback um, and getting a better understanding of what Steve sees as the benefits to an esports program and how he got started. Thanks, Casey. Hey, I'm just excited to be here and talk esports with everybody. Uh, many of you, I see your comments in the chat, and I was right where you were a couple years ago. I have virtually no video game experience, except if you count when I was a middle schooler playing Super Mario Brothers. Um, so I was right there. I didn't know what I was getting into, but I did know that this was another outlet or another way for um, students to get together, to do something they're already doing in a positive way. Um, for us, you also see this, this is my team here on the screen. Uh, we've got jerseys. We treat it like a varsity sport. Um, some of these students are kids that are involved in other things. Others are ones that would never put on the orange and black for us and never feel like they're a team. Um, some of them have told me before they didn't feel like a part of the school before esports came on. Um, so it's just ways to manufacture more opportunities for kids to get together and do things in a positive way. Um, also, you know, just some side benefits. Like I said, we treat it like a varsity sport. These students are all on the eligibility list during season. They have to keep their grades up to compete. Um, you know, they, they've created a culture where everyone's welcome and they celebrate each other. 
we're on the morning announcements when we talk about their successes and things that they're going through and stuff uh, throughout the season. So um, honestly, uh, like I said, for me not having a lot of background in this, it's also cool because the kids get to teach me. You know, often as educators, we're the ones supplying the knowledge we've accrued to the students. Um, I've gotten to take a back seat and say, what do you, what do you mean? What, what does CS mean? And, you know, what are you doing with that? Or who's this player you're playing and all this. So it's just been a lot of fun um, for me to take on that role and, and let them school me on some things. Um, but it's been super simple. The folks at Play Versus helped me get going. Um, they have so many resources as far as like, what's a discord server and how do you create one? They've got uh, expert coaches that they can connect you with that have been doing this for a long time all around the nation that are really high level coaches and will mentor you through this. Um, the support team there is really, really responsive. And then having Ryan and Maggie here in state with us, um, they set me up with all the, you know, how do you find the kids that are interested um, surveys and slide decks to present to parents and administrators. Um, Maggie and I are kind of working on a pet project right now for pricing. You know, it sounds like esports is expensive. Well, when you compare it to a football season and a volleyball season, it's actually a really great deal and it gets more kids involved in your school and your school culture. So um, I would say the biggest suggestion I have is just do it, make it happen for your kids. The first year we did it, we had 50 kids say they're interested. Of those, 35 came out, were actually on the team. Um, and Ryan and Maggie and the team from Play Versus set me up with everything I needed, knowing nothing, going to where now I know not everything, but a little more. Um, and, and it's just a lot of fun. I think you really enjoy it. Thanks so much, Steve. Uh, a lot of good points that I think I'll uh, touch on a little bit further as we go through, but really appreciate those insights. Um, and as Maggie and Ryan mentioned, if you have any questions, um, feel free to put those in the chat for both Steve and myself as we go along. I just want to point out real quick, um, Casey. So yeah, Steve's going to hang out, I think, for a few more minutes. So if you do want to, if you have a specific question, you want to hit him up in the chat or the Q&A, go ahead and do so. Um, he's got to get ready to head out and cover additional baseball and track responsibilities here. Um, but like Steve, we have a lot of coaches that it's a very um, collegial community that want to share and help each other. So chances are, if you're interested or you're a new school and you want to pick somebody's brain, um, based on where you're at, uh, you know, in location in the state, we can, Maggie and I can help connect you with another coach that's been doing it for a year or two, or maybe longer, just because they've been running it as a club. So um, we can definitely kind of get you connected to somebody that'd be more than happy to help out and, and um, kind of get some additional questions answered and kind of give you the lowdown as you head through the season. So, but eventually Steve's going to, you'll see him sneak out. So if you want to ask a question, uh, feel free to try and do it in the next little bit here before he has to escape to other duties as assigned. Perfect. All right. So um, moving right along, we'll just touch on the agenda. So uh, I want to make sure today we go into sort of myth busting esports. Um, as Steve mentioned, there's a lot to learn from the kids, um, knowing that they've probably already been gaming at home, but there's a big difference between that at home gaming um, and competitive esports. So we'll talk a little bit about that, um, why play versus and what we bring to the table to help sort of organize and structure that gameplay. Uh, and then moving into a checklist. So something that can help you really visualize what you need to be focused on um, and how those can correlate to your next steps for fall competition. Um, and then we'll open it to questions, make sure there's plenty of time um, for questions to us as well as Ryan um, and get the floor back to Ryan. Um, so the first thing is really, like I mentioned, just touching base on what you can bring to the table when it comes to organizing your program. Uh, we see a wide variety of different coach types. So in a lot of cases, it's these kids are banging down the math teacher's door. We need a coach. We need a coach, but they don't have any experience. Um, and, and that's okay. So in a lot of cases with that person offering their time to be there as a mentor, what they're really bringing is the ability to lead these kids from what was recreational at their home to
to something that's more structured with supervision, um, making sure that they are understanding what teamwork is, uh, making sure that they're good sports, and all of those things that you've kind of learned as you've gone through maybe your own sports um, in your adolescence or as you're in your own sort of adult uh, workforce, just trying to make sure that you're teaching them real life skills and giving them the opportunity to uh, come together and achieve more in their high school years. Um, so just a few things to note here, like I mentioned, um, another thing we'll touch on is this community element that isn't just within your school, but also expands across the country as your students um, can connect with different schools all around um, through what is a scrimmage option that we have that isn't just central to um, the Michigan League. So about Play Versus. Um, Play Versus is really just a one-stop shop um, for players and coaches to come together to compete um, with their respective programs um, and really allowing for all the sort of structure that comes with an organized league, such as um, get your matches set up, making sure the results are accurate, as well as making sure that the platform in real time of your match is um, being monitored by league officials. You have in-app chat and messaging available to you. So there's streamlined communication uh, and just giving you all the um, aspects in which you would need to be able to um, sort of virtually compete a school that is not you know, typically on a field with you in traditional sports. So a little bit about us. Um, this is our fourth year as a company. Uh, we are exclusive partners of the NFHS network um, and MHSEL. Um, so that gives us a, a really great opportunity to come together with what is a national athletic association and sort of mirror what the expectations are on how we uh, organize ourselves, how we execute gameplay and making sure that those standards are constantly considered when we are um, adapting and growing season over season. Um, another big benefit to play versus is that we are directly um, partnered with our game publishers. So um, in some of the grassroots leagues uh, that are smaller or maybe weekend tournaments um, that they're uh, there is competition. Uh, those are not the same in the sense that we have directly gotten approval to be uh, hosting these games being played on our platform. Um, so it creates a sense of stability uh, and knowing that we are able to offer these with the um, contractual partnership from those publishers such as Nintendo. Um, we also have um, played over 70,000 matches on our platform since inception, which is just a huge number and has given us a great opportunity to expand and improve based on feedback all across the country. Um, people experience esports differently. Um, some states may have a great program like this Michigan one, whereas other states really haven't picked up the um, I guess you could say the understanding that esports is an athletic. So there's just, there's clubs, there's sports, it's a wide variety. And so we make sure that we are listening to everyone and adapting and growing um, with respect to how they perceive esports. Um, and then as um, Steve mentioned, our customer experience team is terrific. Uh, they are very responsive. Um, in the website, there is a chat portion that um, they are responding in real time to help you, especially as you get into those playoffs, championships where things are extremely time sensitive. Um, you're looking at, you know, no more than a minute uh, in response time. Um, and then also, I think our mission and our vision is what keeps us um, above and sort of in perspective of what we're trying to accomplish here through all of the work we do each day. Um, so making sure we're keeping um, player experience at the top of mind so that in every action we are thinking about how this will impact the competition of your kids um, and your students, um, just making sure that, that that is in accordance to how you guys would want them to play and maintaining that teamwork and sportsmanship. So let's Let's look a little bit at the platform to see why um, we do what we do and how it empowers your coaches and teams. Um, so as I mentioned, the access through our partnership um, agreements, um, we are able to offer all of these titles. Um, so you might find as you're sort of polling your school on who's interested, you're going to find a 
that each interest can kind of create a sub interest within your overall um, program. So the kids that might want to play Mario Kart versus League of Legends might be very different. And that's going to be such a huge benefit to your program, bringing in all different types of interests and then, you know, encouraging them to work as a team to cheer each other on, um, give each other different insights as to how this game works and how they could potentially um, purchase a new type they've never played in before. Um, so a wide variety that typically um, allows for a wide variety of students. So that's very exciting. And we're always um, expanding and um, offering different premium options within them. For example, our Hearthstone partnership is relatively new and we will be offering some card packs um, with the sign up of that game, which is something that typically would cost um, money for your students to purchase. So little things like that, that help your players to really um, unlock some of the really great aspects to the games. Um, and then in addition to that, as you can see, free equipment, free game copies, um, that is specific currently to our Nintendo partnership. Um, so right now for anyone that is able to sign up for a Smash, Mario Kart, or Splatoon 2, um, fall team uh, in the Michigan League, uh, and you have not received a uh, free hardware or game copies in the past, you are eligible to receive those just simply through a sign up. Um, so again, remember those emails I, I pinged at the beginning, and I'll, I'll be sure to share those at the end here. Uh, just reach out, uh, and they can help walk you through that to make sure that you're able to redeem that free Switch bundle. Um, so speaking outside of just sort of the uh, offerings in the platform, uh, we like to make sure that we've touched on what opportunities this provides. Uh, I think we consistently talk about how this expands opportunities for a maybe part of the student body that hadn't been included in the past. Um, but overall, I would say um, this is just a very small fraction of what you can see to be opportunities for esports. And there's a ton of great material uh, on the internet that can also guide you through how these benefits can be positioned to your administration or your parents um, to kind of hopefully get that community buy-in. But some here um, are, you know, scholarships, first and foremost, um, a huge benefit um, as we're seeing colleges all over the country really start to offer um, this as they're building their own esports programs. Um, and then more broadly, career path, regardless of if that uh, is funded through a scholarship, but there's a lot of opportunity in engineering, game design, production, um, technology, as well as obviously fostering their um, uh, extended edition. Um, but in terms of what the platform and Play Versus is offering too, um, this is again, just another opportunity for connection and creating a sense of community. Um, so it will drive their ability to uh, scrimmage with schools all across the country, utilizing different management type tools um, in terms of their own accounts um, and making sure that they're responsible with their behavior on the platform. Uh, now we're going to watch a quick video that um, is another great esports coach. Um, his name is Kevin Sapp, uh, and he does a great job of articulating some of these benefits. Going to college for esports feels amazing. Growing up, it's something I never thought would happen. My family never thought it would happen. And then within two and a half years, here I am. He's actually a madman whenever he comes to play on the sticks. You know, he's going to be the first one that pursues this into an academic career. Me getting an esports scholarship could show other students that it's possible for them to, as long as they put their mind to it and put some effort into it. Such a great story. Um, and we have a ton of them. We are so fortunate that a lot of the coaches that we uh, work with are very responsive when we're asking them for feedback, um, how the season went, how they felt winning a championship. We hear some really heartwarming stories, um, specifically from the captains or just the players in general, to say how it impacted them positively and really changed their outlook on school, uh, after school activities, or whatever it may be. Oh, sorry. Going to college. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, 
I know um, there was a quick question in there about scrimmages, so I'll touch on that uh, in this portion here as to what we're providing. So um, as I already mentioned, we have some of the most popular games. Um, these come with some partnership benefits, such as the free hardware and um, in-game in giveaways. Um, but also we have uh, expanded our platform to offer a scrimmaging feature that is at no cost to you. So um, during the off season or during a time where maybe you're just trying to get familiarized and catch a few games outside of what is a structured league, um, you can create your own account at playverses.com. Um, you can create a team, which uh, does require your students to get uh, an account on playversus.com as well. But once they're signed up and in there, you simply verify them as being, yes, they are students at my school, get them added onto a team. And we have a scrimmage tab right in the product that allows you to immediately um, sign that team up for scrimmages. So as you can imagine, there are already teams in there that have posted scrimmage times and dates they're looking for a competitor so you can select one of those or you can build your own and hope someone picks it up but either way it creates um, just sort of like a forum in which people can come and pick up games so um, and that is across all of our titles uh, it's just a matter of getting in there and sort of kicking the tires on getting the team set up and um, selecting that time slot and title that you'd like to participate in it looks like we have a, a question in the Q&A, and I think Steve said he was going to answer it. If you want to go ahead, Steve. Oh, sure. Yeah, David just had a question about competing remotely. I think um, this is one of those things. We we joined, and then the pandemic hit, and this eSports is kind of pandemic-proof. It's bomb-proof. Like, you can do it anywhere. Um, you connect remotely with your, um, your competition. So um, what I would say is, from my experience, like, yes, the students have to have, and that's part of the questionnaire. I took the questionnaire that Ryan and Maggie gave me and kind of tweaked it during the pandemic to say, you know, what's your internet like at home? Um, you know, high speed, low speed, no speed. Um, what type of hardware do you have? If the kids are interested in playing, they probably already have a setup to game at home. So it's less of a barrier than you would think. Um, Nintendo, the Switch will work we've done smash ultimate at home um it's not so much internet or like the switch sometimes the nintendo servers aren't great uh rocket league's really good at home league of legends and some other of the titles that are offered through play versus are are a lot better to do at home um but it just depends uh these kids they do it all the time on their own recreationally like casey had said um so you're just putting some organization around it um so it's something you definitely can do and we've done with some success in the past. Perfect. All right, so moving right along, um, just wanted to touch on some of, uh, and I think Ryan will do the same, but touch on just some of the schools within your Michigan league that um, were champions just recently. So um, a great experience in the spring championship event at Oakland University. Uh, where these schools prevailed in their state championships. So um, I'll let Ryan talk a little bit more and show some images on that later, but just wanted to touch on some of the uh, great benefits and real uh, winners that we saw from spring. Okay, so now just to kind of um, hone in on that last piece I mentioned about some of the benefits with signing up for fall. Uh, again, if you have not previously redeemed this, you are eligible with a simple sign up of one of the teams um, into one of our three titles, which is Smash, uh, Splatoon 2, or Mario Kart 8. Um, so this just kind of gives you a rundown of what that bundle would include, which is the Switch, a controller, an adapter, a 12 month subscription, and then game codes for every game you enroll in. So the switch would be one, regardless of how many uh, teams you sign up, but the game codes would be as many as you would need for all three titles. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this. And I think this will be a good segue into that most recent question about the differences between the two seasons. Um, but this is just a quick rundown as to what to expect in terms of what's being offered in your Michigan State League. Um, as 
opposed to what other titles are being offered in a regional league. Um, so as I mentioned, the winners from the spring leagues sort of mirror exactly this. So League of Legends, Smash, and Rocket League have winners because these are sponsored titles to the Michigan State League. Um, so in the case you sign up for one of these, you will play against the MASSP um, members that are also signed up in this league, whereas the non-state title offering offerings in our Eastern Regional League encompass many states and you would find yourself competing with um, surrounding mostly those in the Eastern time zone is what you're you're looking at um, to potentially play against those in any of the five titles listed at the bottom there. And can I interject real quick Casey um, and the reason so basically the reason behind that is um, in order to really have a healthy operating league we want to ensure that it's competitive at a varsity level we want to ensure that we have so many teams so if there's only uh, you know, a smaller number of teams just as within the state of Michigan, that doesn't lend, it, lend itself to be a really healthy competitive, you know, league experience. So therefore, that's why it kind of does that regional approach, bringing in other states on some of these other titles. So to ensure that we have a, a variety of teams, a volume of teams really to, to have a competitive experience. So, you know, when we have 50 different teams for League of Legends, Smash and Rocket League, that's why we're able to each that's why we're able to keep it in-house and have it just be within those Michigan schools that are in MHSEL, where some of those other ones, in order to bring those numbers up, have to kind of move outside the state. And I'll point out, we did have one of our schools, East Kentwood, had the Madden um, East Regional winner this year, which is actually pretty cool out of you know, five or six other states. So that was really cool to see. So just wanted to point that difference out. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, and yeah, that's really awesome that he won Madden. Um, so yeah, as uh, the state's popularity grows with esports and more titles pick up popularity, this can shift. So it's not set in stone, as Ryan mentioned. This is just to make sure the league health is robust and um, there's enough competition to make it feel as though you're you have a, a wide variety of competitors that you're up against. All right, so it looks like Steve answered that question about the seasons. I think that's the, um, the best thing to focus on, which is you may have uh, players that play a, you know, tennis or um, football, whatever it may be. And so that may um, create a different dynamic in who you see come out in the fall versus the spring, but otherwise the offering is the same. Okay, so some key dates. Um, so our Registration is open. Um, and so again, all you have to do is get on playverses.com to create your account. Um, you'll be able to go through a lot of steps as including the scrimmaging capabilities. Um, and just when you are ready to go through that registration, um, which would have to be before the September 16th date you see here, um, that's when you would move to the actual sign up um, and um, processing of moving into that league for competition. Um, now you will see there's sort of an overlap here. So it's important to note um, on the fifth, we do have a preseason start. This is really important to make sure that you have sort of worked through all the kinks, worked with your IT department, make sure that everything is functioning um, in the way that you'd expect without just assuming that it would. Um, I know a lot of people have um, sort of resets over the summer or you know aren't considering necessarily your needs when coming back. Um, in terms of uh, how your internet's working. So I would say um, utilize those weeks to get yourself in there, uh, compete, uh, and without the worry of impacting your standings in the league play. Um, and then one last call out is uh, end of July does end our early bird pricing. Um, so I will drop over a link or Zubair, if you don't mind dropping a link in there that links to um, what is our help center. There's an article there that really helps um, outline all of this, makes it very clear, or you can reach out to sales at playverse.com and, and they can get you squared away. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to have this webinar to try and make sure people can capitalize on some of this early bird pricing before the school year ends. Obviously, when you come back, there's still plenty of time to join in the fall. Once you come back late August, that first part of September, depending on, um, you know, your start date for your school. But, uh, you know, to really take advantage of some of those specials, that's why we want to have the webinar to give you a chance to do so before you are on summer break. 
Yeah, that's a good point. And I will also add that we're not looking to collect payment until that like end of August, uh, middle September timeframe when the league starts. So getting yourself signed up, um, getting a team enrolled there is really is what going to lock in that pricing for you. And you don't have to worry about having to sort of cut any check or anything the next day. Uh, we're giving you plenty of time to get that organized when you're back in school um, in the fall. Um, so just continuing on, um, again, you, you can find this on our help center and I'll drop that link. Oh, Zubir did right there. Um, so that help.playvs.com is where you'll find all of our help article collections, um, but that link specifically takes you to our pricing FAQ. Um, <clears throat> so in that help page, you'll find our schedule there too, where all of this is outlined, but it's important to note our prep week is in between preseason and the regular season to give us a week to kind of get organized, facilitate the scheduling and get everything um, ready and squared away to go. Uh, and then you will see at the end of September, that's when the league play starts. And that will run uh, through right uh, before the holidays uh, with a break over Thanksgiving um, to get all of those weeks in and then complete championships. Okay, so I um, will quickly try to run through this. So um, some coach checklist items. So as I mentioned um, earlier, and this is kind of towards the bottom here, but I would say one of the number one things to do is make sure you are engaged with your IT and administration when it comes to just eliminating any headaches when it comes to technology. Um, we have a lot of coaches that are the IT person at their school, and I swear they like <laughs> the most uh, easily ran programs because they, they are tuned into both. So I can't stress enough how important that will be. Um, and then really getting that schedule over to your admin, um, whatever area you're using, if you need to reserve the computer lab, make sure that they have your schedule and that they're very clear on when you'll be there for both games and practices um, so that there's no overlap and you can continue on as you've planned. Uh, again, familiarizing yourself, uh, the scrimmage feature really allows you to kick the tires on the um, capabilities without having to commit at that time. So just go ahead and make your account, uh, get your players in there and signed up um, so that you can start to play around with verifying them, adding them to teams, and just getting an understanding of how the platform works and what you'll be expected to do when it comes time to finalize your registration. Um, and then also on the help uh, center, you will find that we have a collection of game day protocols and rule books. Uh, each rule book and game day protocol is specific to each title. So if you feel that your program is going to get started with Rocket League, go in there, check out both the rule book and the game day protocol. So you're clear on understanding how the league is ran, what rules are in place uh, and what to expect as you go to compete with other schools. Um, and then engagement, like Steve mentioned, get on the morning announcements, hang up some flyers. Um, I think it really ties back to the students feeling like they're a part of the school when you can emphasize how great they're doing, what they're doing, how to stream the games if you choose to do so, so that um, other members of the student body can kind of log in and watch competition and, and be able to cheer them on. Um, player checklist. Uh, this is very critical as well. So we've seen in the past where a program can be up and running, um, but because they haven't solidified a true buy-in from the players, they're not taking it as seriously as they need to, which leads to obviously no players, uh, no competition. So we don't want that to happen. So it's, uh, again, we've seen success with a player conduct being signed off on or a player commitment document that you've outlined that really just stresses the importance, importance of committing to the schedule, both practice and games, um, as Steve mentioned earlier, keeping their grades up. Uh, and then we do have a player conduct in our help center, which really outlines the basics of sportsmanship and what we expect when it comes to how they conduct themselves during gameplay. Um, and then, yeah, just being an advocate, helping, and um, you'll find some students will kind of 
break away and, and find themselves um, really mentoring other students. And that's when you can start to think about captains and um, really kind of creating a true sense of sport when it comes to um, encouragement and mentorship student to student. Okay, so this is um, just kind of another timeline. I think this will be helpful as you um, review this deck and the recording. This is just, again, another sense of uh, to keep you aligned with our calendar on what you should try to be accomplishing at that same time. So kind of mirroring the, the calendar with your checklist to say, um, make sure you're following along here so that you don't find yourself in the uh, last minute scramble to get everything organized. Um, and then to touch on the um, early bird pricing, as I mentioned, this is a help article that you can find at help.playvs.com. Um, and this is giving you two options. We do a um, player pass option, which can be bought in different package increments. Uh, so you can see here, this is shown for 16 players, um, but it's also available in four and eight, depending on what need you have based on the size of your program. Um, and this pass is only needed if someone is going to compete in a league match. So uh, you might have some kids that just scrimmage throughout the season. Maybe they're not ready to compete. Um, they're trying to prepare for spring. Those will not accrue a cost. It's only those that will be participating in league matches. Um, and then unlimited makes it pretty simple. This covers the whole school year, both seasons. Uh, you can play all the games with as many teams as you want. Um, so as you see some, some big gains and growth in your program, this might be um, a viable option for you. Can I interject again, Casey, real quick? Yeah. So if you go back to the pricing, so a good way to remember this is, again, we have two seasons, right? So fall versus spring. So kind of that, that rough price of $64 per player, it it's, would be that cost per player per game that they are participating in per season. So if Susie wants to do um, Rocket League in both fall and spring, it would be $128 roughly. Um, if Susie wants to just do the fall, but she wants to do Rocket League and Smash, Again, it would be 128 just for that fall piece. So you kind of got to do some math a little bit to figure out what's the better route for you. Um, I think you'll be surprised at how many kids will show interest in this because you know if you have a lot of kids that are showing interest, the unlimited plan absolutely is the way to go because then you don't have to worry about, well, every kid only gets to play in one game because only have X amount of dollars type of a thing. Um, they In that case with the unlimited plan, Susie can play in four games in both the fall and the spring. And usually when they do it, I think with the term we use is tickets, correct me if I'm wrong, Casey or, or Zubair, or a seat sometimes. So it's not tied directly to a player. So if Susie's playing in the fall, but Johnny wants to play in, um, in the spring, if, if Susie doesn't play, that money isn't stuck with Susie. It's not like you're out there. You would just transfer that. You would have to make sure that you have a seat or a ticket ready for a different player in the spring, if that makes sense. So don't worry about it being tied to um, a specific player because their schedules will change as I'm sure you guys know already uh, from uh, traditional sports and clubs and things like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. So you got to do a little bit of math in your, help, in your head in terms of what makes the most sense. I will say the unlimited value obviously is, is great because uh, they can do as many games as they want and it covers you for the entire year, both seasons. Yeah, you're right. It does create, it just takes one last thing to think about. Um, and it is really great price when you consider um, what you're unlocking here. So um, reach out to the customer success or sales team and they can kind of help you based on what you think your participation will be uh, in the full school year and map out a few scenarios with you to make sure it's uh, most beneficial to you. Um, all right, and then just jumping to questions, but I think I'll let um, Ryan, since we've kind of been answering the questions as we go, um, and I will let Ryan share some of the spring information. Well, while I'm doing that, I see Maggie kind of answered um, the question there about middle school participants. So, I, you know, we don't have a middle school league yet. I know that's something I'm, uh, that's a possibility down the road with play versus Maggie mentioned that 13 year is kind of like that magic number to be able to be in the system. They can compete in the high school league. Um, the Michigan high school esports league, we are working on trying to provide a club model for middle schools to participate in um, where just in terms of 
how do you generate interest in esports? How do you give kids a safe place to go and have like a video game club, if you will, after school? We're working on providing uh, a curriculum with weekly lesson plans designed for the middle age, uh, middle school age students. Uh, and then also how you could do like some scrimmaging even within your school or even scrimmaging with others outside of your school. So um, uh, one of uh, the newest members of the MASSP team, Nina Davis is a former middle school principal. So she's taking the lead on that. Uh, we're going to be working with some pilot schools in the fall on what that middle school esports club and curriculum looks like. And then we're hopefully going to be able to un, uh, roll that out come next winter, you know, semester two, if you will. So that'll be something. And we'll do webinars on that come later in the fall for middle schools that are they're interested in doing that. So I'm going to share my screen now. Too many things open here, sorry. Here we go. So I just wanna show really some cool things that, um, that we did this year and some things that we have planned for next school year. So, uh, you know, as we're coming towards the end of the, the shutdown of things from the pandemic, we were able to offer in-person events uh, this school year. So we did our first ever fall uh, league championship state finals, if you will, at Eastern Michigan University. And here's just some really cool pictures. So we've got, um, you know, schools come together to compete on a stage in front of an audience. We were broadcasting the games. Uh, so for grandpa and grandma can watch if they aren't traveling to the event. So we did this for our three league state titles, League of Legends, Rocket League, and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And then uh, not just for competitive in-person play, excuse me, for in-person play where they get to see some of these uh, other student athletes that they compete against all year long, season long. We also get them on a college campus and they get to talk to uh, professionals in the esports space. They get to talk with college student athletes that are on esports teams. Uh, we have uh, colleges that are there recruiting and scouting actually. So it's a great opportunity to get them uh, you know, with their peers in a, an area of passion and make real college and career um, connections, if you will, while they're at that event. So that was the fall at Eastern Michigan University. And then, oh, here's some additional photos of some of our championship schools from East Kentwood, Novi, and Dakota. Medals and trophies and certificates, right? We treat them, you know, we honor and celebrate them just as much as we do the championship volleyball team, football team, track team, right? And then for the spring, we were at Oakland University. And then this again was another great facility. Um, we had walk up music for the kids as they were being announced and introduced uh, before they played, just like you see at a basketball game, right? In fact, uh, our teams even got to scrimmage and compete against the Oakland University esports Rocket League team. So that was really cool to see. And as Casey mentioned uh, earlier, this was from um, um, uh, Bluefield Hills and Byron Center, where our state champions this year. So we are going to be offering those events again next year. We're also going to be adding some regional uh, weekend invitationals, if you will, or tournaments. So uh, we're going to try and do this, although uh, a majority of our schools are in Southeast Michigan, we are trying to engage more with the schools that are on the west side of the state, the northern part of the state. So we are looking to add tournaments at Western Michigan University, Grand Valley University, maybe do something uh, towards northern Michigan. Um, we're going to Divine Child's going to host a tournament for us. Uh, we actually have a really cool partnership with the Detroit Pistons uh, GT, which is their professional gaming team. They ran a virtual Rocket League tournament for us this last fall in which Divine Child won uh, $2,500 towards their esports program. And they had a bunch of swag they got from Champion and some really high end gaming controllers from Scuff Gaming. Um, so the US Marines and Detroit Pistons sponsor that. We're going to run that tournament again this fall. And we're also working on, we just talked to them the other day, just like you see the varsity basketball teams going and playing a match at the, on the Pistons floor at the Little Caesars Arena. We're going to try and model the same thing with esports teams playing a match on the uh, Pistons floor on their court and then you get a ticket to go to the Pistons game later that night so we're really trying to offer opportunity for students um although the a big benefit of this is being able to do it virtually right there's so if you can remind your athletic directors there's no refs needed there's really no transportation but to do one of these really cool unique events we do want to bring them uh face to face in person for that unique experience and so uh, we have a lot of things we're gonna 
Uh, we got a lot of dates on hold. We're just confirming in the next uh, couple of weeks, month or two, and Maggie and I will be pushing all that information out. And we have our contact information there if, if you have any other questions following this webinar. So those were just a, a couple of things that uh, I wanted to make sure that we, we mentioned. And I wanted to um, defer to some of our play versus team. There was a question asked in the chat um, regarding um, if students are interested in playing esports at the college level that I am unsure of. We might have to follow back up after the um, webinar, but I wanted to see if you guys had the answer too. Yeah, so I'm not extremely well versed in uh, eligibility uh, based on NCAA, um, and I understand having grade 13, they've sort of aged out of participating in our high school sports. So we can we can follow up. Um, let me try to get some internal information and see what I can find. And I can also ask. We have great partnerships with the uh, varsity esports coach at Oakland. Um, uh, Eastern Michigan, as I mentioned, Grand Valley and Western. So I can probably try and get an answer from them. Um, it's, it's East esports is still so new um, that actually it's not a NCAA, uh, um, sanctioned, uh, uh, I don't want to say classic event, but athletic event really yet. So there's different leagues that operate within the college environment that have their own, uh, requirements and eligibility rules, but it actually isn't, believe it or not, an NCAA sanctioned thing. So um, that would probably change from league to league. So for us in Michigan, a lot of like the uh, MAC schools, for example, a lot of them aren't, uh, they're part of the MAC system, but they actually have their own name for their league. And so there's different requirements and eligibility. So I can try and find that information out. So that's a really, really good question. So um, I saw one out in here. So Shane had a question. So right now, Shane, we are not at, um, where we are dividing these out into different divisions based on school size. That is the goal. Um, so we have charter and virtual academies mixed in with large a, um, schools like Dakota, right? So that there, obviously there's a big difference. Um, that is the goal. You know, we had 53 schools in the spring, 140 teams compete this last spring. That was the largest we've seen in two years. And we're hoping to get that number above 75 next year, over a hundred after that. Um, I, I would like to see it grow to a point where we can have different divisions based on a school, you know, student body population size. Um, so you can have like size schools competing against one another. So we do have a range. Um, it's just so new that, uh, it, you know, we're not quite there yet. So, but that is the plan. So hopefully that answers, answers your question, your question there. And, and we are trying to do some tournaments too, where it's not just a team tournament, but it would be like individuals as well. So some of those schools, smaller schools, if you still have a rock star that's on your team, that one rock star can compete individually, maybe at like a weekend tournament against some of the others. You might have not the same depth as a large class A school, but you still have somebody that's a pretty darn good player um, that could maybe uh, hold their own against others. So great question. Any other questions? Um, David, yes. Yeah, so um, Rocket League is actually a three-person team. Uh, Smash Brothers is a three-person team. League of Legends is a five-person team. So obviously you need to have enough to fill those out. We generally say to have like a, a substitute alternate player on hand too, just in case somebody's sick for the day or, you know, they have a, their schedule is um, compromised for whatever reason. And there are a bunch of individual games. Most of the individual games and feel free to pop in Casey or, or Zuber here, like uh, Madden, for example, that's an individual game. Uh, a lot of the individual ones are on that regional league scale. So, and I don't know if we want to pull up that list or we can go through that list real quick and you can tell them which ones are our team versus individual. I know um, you had it yeah. outside. I think, I think maybe put it in the chat. So yeah, League of Legends, five on five, Rocket League, three on three, Super Smash three versus three, Madden is individual. Um, what about Splatoon, Mario Kart, Hearthstone and NBA 2K? So um, Hearthstone is three um here let me share this 
NBA 2K is one. So let me just share this and we'll go through it real quick. <clears throat> and NBA 2K is going to be brand new next year. Um, just so you know, that's a new one that that's coming that we didn't able, weren't able to offer yet, but that'll be brand new next year. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, I can't wait to see some of those competitions, but um, so we'll just run through, like you said, League of Legends 5, Rocket League 3, Mario Kart 4, Madden 1, NBA 2K 1, Hearthstone 3, Splatoon 4, Smash 3. Good memory. Nice job, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, like I mentioned in the um, game day protocols and the rule books, when you get onto our help center, all of that in terms of like what equipment you need, how many players you need, what type of equipment each player needs will be outlined there and be very specific uh, to make sure you're clear on how you can compete. I see Darren, I had this written down. Um, I, I want to be respectful of everyone's time because we've planned for about 45 minutes up to about 60 here. Um, Darren's asking maybe to see, I think what he wants to see is a little bit of what the, the dashboard kind of looks like a little bit, oh. but before we go there, um, just see if there's anybody else that has to, has to hop off if they want to see if they have a chance to ask any more questions. Um, and for the people that need to bounce, they can do that. And, and if anybody wants to stay with Darren to see what the dashboard or the coaches portal and stuff looks like, um, we, we can do that here in just a moment, if that makes sense. So again, any other questions about the games or how the season works? Um, any, anything like that? And again, if you have our contact, uh, Mike's as well as Maggie and mine, um, we would be glad to uh, answer any questions, talk to a principal, talk to an athletic director, um, anything like that. And again, we'll be running some more of these this exact same webinar come fall when, when school starts back up. Again, we just want to do this one today. So if you are pretty serious about doing it, we want to give you an opportunity to get that early bird pricing. That's all. I'm not seeing too many other questions. So, oh, here we go. What kind of times are needed for practices and how many matches could there be? So typically Dallas, um, as you saw the schedule Casey showed earlier, they only, they play once a week on that scheduled night for that team. Again, if you're a coach that has multiple teams, then you would, you know, be there multiple nights working with your students or if a student plays on multiple game titles, they would have multiple nights. Otherwise they play once a week. Um, typically on Mondays is what's considered the practice day for teams, for schools that have players on multiple teams. Um, but for those that are looking to get more competition in, if you have a pretty competitive team, uh, that's why we're trying to do more of these tournaments and virtual tournaments and in-person tournaments to give them additional opportunities uh, to compete throughout the season. So instead of just the eight to nine weeks of competition plus playoffs, that's why we're trying to offer more of those opportunities. And did I say that correctly, Casey Zubair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just see if I can, is this coming over okay? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'll just kind of uh, jump back for a second. So the whole ABS.com, like I mentioned, um, this is our, sorry, I've got my Zoom bar in the way. Um, this is our homepage here. Uh, this is where you can come to see all of our um, titles. So again, if you're looking for particular information on any of this, this is where you would come. Um, also, Esports 101 is a lot of great resources for getting started, being a coach, as well as directly taking you to our help center, like I've mentioned 30 times already. Um, so you can come here and find all of our collections. Um, so particularly for the fall season down here, or you have your coach resources up here. That is a great way to kind of go through those checklists and things I mentioned earlier. Um, but in terms of the platform, once you get your account signed up, uh, we do do a verification process to make sure you are an employee of the school through a third party um, provider that we utilize. It's pretty quick um, to verify as long as you're not brand new employee. Um, and even if you are, our support team does the verifications manual if it's not automatically done. So in this case, you land on the dashboard. Um, the left pane navigation is pretty intuitive to how you need to sort of work through each step, uh, but you'll also see there's a checklist here. Uh, so this little navigation for this carousel will, once the verification of your appointment is finished, um, that task is done, 
the coach handbook is amazing. I recommend it 10 out of 10. So incredibly helpful. You can download it here and we're updating it each season. So it stays relevant. Um, and then it will tell you, create your team, verify players, fill team. So that is going to directly uh, imply going to your first tab here, which is my school. Um, this is where you'll find the management and management of coaches. So as new players are signing up, they'll sit in sort of a pending state waiting for you to verify that they are in fact a part of your school. Then they'll kind of fall into this pool here, giving you some uh, details based on their sign up credentials. So the email they use, when they're going to graduate, what esport they're interested in, uh, all that will funnel here. Um, and then once you have a good baseline for your players, that's when you'll come to the next one, which is where you'll do your team creation. Uh, so you'll see in this drop down here, all of our titles in which you can simply navigate to whichever one you're interested in. So Mario Kart here, um, and you can create a team. So it's really the basics of uh, Mario Kart, naming it um, something non-creative because I'm on the spot here, create team, um, and then using those verified players to fill them up. So like I mentioned, uh, once you do that, you will become scrimmage ready uh, and there's no cost associated to that. So that's sort of the 101. Um, and then you'll constantly be pro prompted to get your enrollment registration finished as you're going through and you'll get um, notifications up here reminding you, hey, uh, enrollment deadline is September 16th. Don't forget to enroll. Um, so that's pretty simple prompt there, which will take you to um, this plan selection page that we mentioned. And again, this is one of the reasons why we really appreciate the partnership with Playverse is because of, as you can see, the very intuitive uh, portal or dashboard or system, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's not, we're not sending stuff around in matches on a random spreadsheet and trying to drop kids in. And, you know, it, it's a very professional um, setup and system to try and make this a great experience for not just obviously the student athletes, but for the coaches as well and the volunteers and the people um, that we're asking to help kind of lead, uh, you know, lead the charge on this for their, for their students at their school. So um, again, one of the reasons why this is a pretty easy process to get up and started. If you know, or you're pretty confident that you have the interest, it's pretty easy lift to get, to get started. Uh, looks like there's one more question. Um, this is players. Oh, you mean like how you hold tryouts? Um, uh, I can connect you, Darren, if you want, with uh, some of those other coaches. You know, I know um, Vincenzo from Dakota has a huge video game club, and they have to run, um, you know, uh, tryouts. You know, you can have multiple teams. You can have like your A team, your B team type of a thing. You can have varsity, JV. You know, if it's the um, Croslex uh, esports team, you can have the Croslex blue. And then there's a separate Croslex white, depending on how you want to run it. Um, so there are different ways that you can be creative to try and do that. But just like in traditional sports, you can run, um, you know, a tryout to see um, who who gets to do that. So um, maybe Meg, if we can write down Darren's name, we can pull up his email. We can try and connect him with some of those coaches that I know do run tryouts and they can give you their insight as to how they do it. Awesome. Okay, well, I know we're at the top of the hour, so um, please uh, let me just drop this in here for all of those that have played with us before. Um, please reach out to Mike or um, for anyone new that's wanting to get started, uh, you can connect with our sales team that can walk you through uh, every, every sort of possible uh, way that you could compete with us in the fall and making sure that it's set up correctly. And thank you so much for everyone's time. Yes, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you to uh, the, the Play Versus team, Casey and Zubair and Zach for being there. Um, I'll send this recording out uh, by this time tomorrow and we're here to help and we hope to uh, see all of you next fall uh, join our league and then maybe even see you at some of these in-person events we have planned. So really appreciate your time, everybody. Take care.